afraid of other kids, afraid of being hurt or embarrassed, afraid of being seen as weak. But mostly, I was afraid of my father. When I was nine years old, I watched my father punch my mother in the side of her head so hard that she collapsed. I saw her spit blood. That moment in that bedroom, probably more than any other moment in my life, has defined who I am today. Within everything that I've done since then, the awards and accolades, the spotlights and the attention, the characters and the laughs, there's been a subtle string of apologies to my mother for my inaction that day, for failing her in that moment, for failing to stand up to my father, for being a coward. What you've come to understand as Will Smith, the alien annihilating MC, the bigger than life movie star, is largely a construction, a carefully crafted and honed character designed to protect myself, to hide myself from the world, to hide the coward. My father was my hero. His name was Willard Carroll Smith, but we all called him Daddy-O. Daddy-O was born and raised in the rough and rugged streets of North Philadelphia in the 1940s. Daddy-O's father, my grandfather, owned a small fish market. He had to work from 4 a.m. until late at night every day. My grandmother was a nurse and often worked the night shift at the hospital. As a result, Daddy-O spent much of his childhood alone and unsupervised. The North Philly streets had a way of hardening you. You either crystallized into a mean motherfucker or the hood broke you. Daddy-O was smoking cigarettes by 11 and drinking by age 14. My father developed a defiant and aggressive attitude that would continue all his life. When he was 14, my grandparents, fearing where his life was headed, scraped together what money they could and sent him to an agricultural boarding school in the Pennsylvania countryside, where kids learned farming techniques and basic handyman work. It was a strict and traditional place, and by sending him there, they hoped to introduce some much-needed structure and discipline into his life. But nobody was going to tell my father what to do. Other than working on some of the tractor engines, he couldn't be bothered with what he described as that hillbilly bullshit. He would skip classes, he smoked cigarettes, and kept on drinking. At age 16, Daddy-O was done with this school and ready to go home. He decided to get himself kicked out. He started disrupting classes, ignoring all the rules, and antagonizing anyone in a position of authority. But when the administrators tried to send him home, my grandparents refused to take him back. We paid for a full year, they said. You're getting paid to deal with them, so deal with them. Daddy-O was stuck. But Daddy-O was a hustler. He was going to find his way out. On his 17th birthday, he snuck off campus, walked a half a dozen miles to the nearest recruiting office, and enlisted in the United States Air Force. This was classic Daddy-O. He was so hell-bent on defying authority and rebelling against both his parents and the school that he jumped out of the frying pan of an agricultural boarding school and directly into the fire of the United States military. He ended up in the exact structure and discipline my grandparents had desperately hoped to instill in him. But as it turned out, Daddy-O loved it. It was in the military that he discovered the transformative power of order and discipline, two values that he came to worship as the guardrails protecting him from the worst parts of himself. Wake up at 4 a.m., train all morning, work all day, study all night. He found his lane. He discovered that he could outlast anybody and began to take pride in that. It was another aspect of his defiant attitude. Nobody could force him to wake up with a bugle horn because he already was up. With his passionate work ethic, boundless energy, and undeniable intelligence, he should have quickly risen through the ranks. But there were two issues. First, he had a brutal temper. 
and superior officer or not, if you were wrong, he wasn't doing it. Second, his drinking. 